Hello and welcome to Bavaria. I'm here in Germany, right on the Austrian border, about to take this BMW i4 M50 out for a nice long drive to get our first driving impressions. The i4 M50 is the M version of BMW's i4. It's the first all electric vehicle in the BMW brand that the M division got a hold of and gave it their special touches. Now this car here has 536 horsepower and goes zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds. We're gonna be able to get this thing out on the Autobahn, hopefully test some high-speed driving. I wanna check out things like the regenerative braking system. A BMW actually put a uh, configurable regenerative braking system in this vehicle. And that's contrary to all the previous BMW electric vehicles, including the i3, which was all electric. They had one set regenerative braking level and that was it. You got it and you couldn't change it. In this here, we're able to configure it to the level of regen that we want, which is how it really should be with an electric vehicle. So I like that BMW went in that direction. As for the appearance of the i4, you know, I think it has a nice muscular stance. I generally like how the vehicle looks. I think it gives off really nice vibes. I'm not gonna go too far into detail on the front. I'm not one of the people that actually likes that front grille. I think that's a minority, but I'm really not gonna, I promised myself I wouldn't harp on it. It's there, it's BMW's design language, and I guess some people like it. It's really not my taste, but I'm looking away from that, looking at the rest of the vehicle. I actually like what I see. And inside the vehicle, I've had a chance to sit in it for a little play, play around. It's got the new iDrive 8, super comfortable, as you would expect from BMW. Feels rock solid. When you close the doors, you get that thunk, that really solid feel that you want to get when you get into a premium uh, vehicle, whether it's electric or not. It's all-wheel drive. It's got a lot more power than the base i440. Cost more. It's going to retail for $66,895 in the U.S. It has the same 84 kilowatt hour battery pack as the base i4 does. And of that, 81 kilowatt hour is usable. It isn't EPA range rated yet, but BMW estimates it should come in at 245 miles per charge. So we're going to hop out now on the highway, check this guy out, give you my initial driving impressions. But first, please don't forget click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. The M50 is a blast to drive. It's got that instant torque. While it might not be that kick you in your back torque that you feel with say a Tesla Model 3 performance version, not quite as strong as that, but it is good and it has a great driving experience. Handling has been fantastic. Um, actually, I'm super impressed with that on these twisting winding roads. The car behaves exactly how I would want it to. And this is a heavy car, it weighs over 5,000 pounds. Uh, and it's over, it's close to 1,000 pounds heavier than a Tesla Model 3 Performance. So I wasn't expecting it to feel as tossable as it is, but I mean, you can feel the weight, but the car can handle it. The suspension's dialed in and it really works well. I do like the uh, regenerative brake settings that we have on here. There's four different settings you could set it to. And what I like about it is you can feel the difference in each setting. I've had been in other electric vehicles where you almost couldn't tell the difference between low and high regeneration. Uh, but with this, you can. Now, it has an adaptive regeneration setting, which at first I thought was great and it was working fantastically until I'm on the highway going 70, 80 miles an hour. And as cars cut in in front of me, the adaptive regenerative braking would slam on and it would remain on until the car was like 15 or 20 car lengths in front of me. You know, I was holding up traffic. There were people almost running into the back of me. So that needs some adjusting. Um, I, I like how it you know recognized the car cut in front of me and um, applied the brakes, but it needs to be able to do that more smoothly. And I think that's probably something that is gonna get tweaked because I don't think they'll leave it this way. It didn't seem like it was working very well at all. So I switched it off the adaptive regenerative braking level onto uh, you know high, and then I put it on moderate and low. I just tried them all out and um, they all have a noticeable 
different level of region. That's the way it should be. But as I said, I don't always get that when I drive some of the other electric vehicles. It almost seems like it doesn't matter what level you put it in, there's a little bit of a difference in the different modes. Um, as far as acceleration, this goes zero to 60. BMW claims 3.9 seconds. It felt about that fast. Um, I have a Tesla Model 3, not performance, the long range dual motor, which doesn't like 4.3 seconds, somewhere around this. It's felt just that touch quicker than my uh, Model 3, which is good. But this is the performance version of the, uh, uh, of the, of the i4. So you should really put it up against the Tesla Model 3 performance because the prices are also similar to those. This would be fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 more than my, um, my Model 3. Uh, you know, is this a Model 3 killer? You know, it's not. Um, uh, is it a great performer that I think people are gonna love? Yeah, uh, I, I think this is a great performance electric vehicle. It, it's built like a tank. It's nice and quiet on the highway. It's got that instant acceleration. It, the handling was great. The braking was great other than that little uh, software glitch, I think, with, with the adaptive regen. Uh, and I think this is a good package. I think people are going to really enjoy it, especially BMW enthusiasts. Now, it has this artificial noise, iconic sounds. And I put them on at first because I just wanted to try them out. And after like five minutes, it was incredibly annoying. I don't know if even the BMW enthusiasts that want that audible feedback, if they're going to like it because it... It was annoying, and I don't get annoyed by driving combustion engine cars when that are loud and you hear the exhaust. It doesn't annoy me, but this was a little annoying, and uh, I'm probably never gonna put that back on and uh, uh, just drive it the rest of the day the way it is now. I'll leave that up to, to the owners to decide if they wanna put that on. But I do like that BMW included it. And I know a lot of electric vehicle enthusiasts say, you know, um, there should be no artificial noise. You don't need it. Quiet, peaceful drive is great. And I agree with that. But why not give the owners the option? If they want it, they can put it on. And just like the regenerative braking level, before this BMW had this kind of notion that we know how much regenerative braking you need. And that's the level we have. And that's good for you. <laughs> but, you know, now they, are, they, they, they allow the customer to configure it. Let them configure sound too if they want to. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, overall, um, very positive feedback on this car. Obviously, I didn't have it on a track. We weren't able to do really heavy driving. Um, most of it was highway. There was a lot of traffic. Did get it up over 140 miles an hour a couple times um, and uh, was able to do some zigzags here and some back roads, but um, the roads are really narrow here. I don't know the terrain. I'm not going to push it. Uh, especially, you know, in a, in a country that I'm unfamiliar with in an area that I have never driven on before. But, um, you know, overall, I think this is a really good first effort for BMW. I say first effort. I know they made the i3, but that they were stepping out of their comfort zone with that. They weren't trying to make a vehicle that fit into their product line. This is. This is supposed to fit right into their product line and say, look, this is everything our, our core brand products do except you plug it in and it's electric. And um, it has all the excitement, the joy. Um, BMW has told us in the briefing before we got the cars, this is the ultimate electric driving machine. Um, I think it's an excellent electric driving machine. I might not give them the ultimate tag just yet, but uh, this is the first one. There's more to come from BMW. So now let's take a look at some of the other features uh, that I can't go over while I'm driving the car. And then we'll give a summary up in the end. The i4's door handles are flush and pull outward when you grab them to open the door. Now that's different than BMW's iX where when you squeeze the door handle it just pops the door open without actually extending the door handle. The charge port is on the right rear side of the vehicle and there are separate internal covers for both the AC and DC charging pins. Speaking of charging, the i4 has an 11 kilowatt onboard charger and can fully recharge in about eight hours if you're charging from a level two charging stores that can deliver the full 11 kilowatts. As for DC fast charging, it has a peak charging rate of 205 kilowatt. As you can see from the chart here that BMW provided, it'll charge at around 200 kilowatt right up till about the 25% state of charge point. And as you can see, it begins a very aggressive ramp down to 80%. BMW says the i4 will recharge from 10% to 
to 80% in 31 minutes when charging from a DC fast charge station that can deliver the full 200 kilowatts the i4 can accept. And if you plug in at a low state of charge, in about 10 minutes you should be able to replenish roughly 100 miles of driving range. While the body does look like it could have a trunk, it's not. It is a true hatchback. And when you open up the rear hatch, it exposes a lower compartment for additional storage of things like charging cables, adapters, or anything else you might need with regards to charging the i4. There are also cubbies on both sides of the hatchback with nets to hold the contents in, as well as a 12 volt charging socket and a hook to secure additional cargo. There's a 40-20-40 rear seating configuration that folds relatively flat to accommodate large cargo. Except for the large curved display screen, the interior of the i4 is mostly a traditional BMW interior. The center console opens up to reveal a wireless charging pad, a USB port, and two cup holders. The center console drive selector is also very traditional BMW, and you can select from Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro driving modes there. Inside the armrest, you'll find limited storage space and a USB-C port. The three-spoke steering wheel felt good in my hands, and there's a considerable amount of controls on it. On the right side, there's a scroll knob that allows you to adjust the content from the driver's display. That's where you also control the content for the head-up display, which actually worked really well in the i4. On the left side of the steering wheel, you control things like your adaptive cruise control and driver assist system. The i4 is one of the first vehicles to have BMW's new iDrive 8, and I found it a huge improvement over previous versions. The system was snappy, extremely responsive, and it was actually easy to navigate, even though there's a lot of content there. BMW allows the owner to set the car up to the exact configuration they want within each specific driving mode. For instance, even in the most economical driving mode, Eco Pro, you can use the standard configuration or switch to an individual configuration where you set the vehicle up to perform the way you would like it to. It's really easy to scroll through the apps and control things in a vehicle like your driver settings. You could click on drivetrain and chassis, adjust your iconic sounds, the level of regenerative braking. You can address your damping, your steering, and other drivetrain settings. Adjusting your charging settings is a simple task. You can do things like changing your scheduled charging, you can set preconditioning, and you can also limit the amount of energy the vehicle takes in while charging on AC. There's really too many settings and features to go over in iDrive 8 right now. Hopefully I'll get a long-term loan on an i4 from BMW and perhaps I can do a video that just does i8 features and functions because I can spend a half an hour here just going over all the different settings that are offered in this new iDrive 8. The rear seating area is relatively spacious. There's a decent amount of headroom, not a ton. There are two USB-C ports for rear passengers, and the rear passengers also get to control their own heating and cooling. There are around 40 driver assistance functions available for the i4, and the vehicle I was driving had the optional driving assistant professional that includes steering and lane control assistant. The system seemed to work very well with the exception of the automatic braking feature complaint that I had earlier in the video. It's a level two driver's assist system and it monitors the driver and it will tell you to pay attention and grab the steering wheel if it sees that you aren't. However, I had a problem with that monitoring system. When I first got in the car and set my steering wheel to the height that I wanted it to, I got a warning that I was blocking the driver monitoring system and I had to adjust my steering wheel so the system could watch me while I'm driving. So that's a wrap on our BMW i4 M50 first drive and first impressions review. Is this the fabled Tesla killer that everybody is always searching for? No, it's not, but it is definitely a worthy Tesla competitor. It's competitively priced, especially when you put it up against other high performance BMWs in this class. The performance is there, it handles very well, very stable at high speeds, the zero to 60 time in under four seconds, 
Interior is very comfortable. iDrive 8 is a big improvement over previous versions. It has adjustable regenerative braking that's new to BMW that I really appreciated and worked really well. Um, it's a complete package. Uh, we think that uh, BMW has nailed it here with this one and I'm a little surprised because it's not on a dedicated platform and that's what I've always talked about that electric vehicles really need a dedicated platform. And the fact that this doesn't have a dedicated platform doesn't appear to have hurt its performance. What it probably hurt was its efficiency because uh, for a vehicle of this size, it's a little chunky. It weighs over 5,000 pounds. A, a comparable Tesla Model 3, for instance, performance version, uh, that is three inches shorter than this. This is three, about three and a half inches longer than the Model 3, but it weighs about a thousand pounds less. And that helps the performance and really helps the efficiency. On my drive here today, I drove a little over a hundred miles. I averaged 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. If I had been driving my Tesla Model 3 on that same route, I probably would have averaged about 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, a significantly better consumption rate. Um, but the fact that BMW put a large battery in this kind of balances that out. It's, it's an 84 kilowatt hour battery that's going to be EPA range rated at somewhere around 245 miles. We don't have that uh, final figure, but based on my driving today, I think that's probably going to be right about where it comes at because considering the miles I drove and the remaining miles and my consumption figure, I probably should have averaged somewhere around 225, 230 miles, and I drove it pretty hard. So that's it for the BMW i4 M50. Is it a winner? We think it is. Will customers? We'll see. Don't forget, tap that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel.